Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Jess. Welcome back to my kitchen here at Roots and Refuge Farm. Today, I'm gonna be showing you something that I think is a really important thing to know when you're growing a garden, and that is how to quick pickle. Quick pickling is great because there is this awkward stage at the beginning of the garden where you might be getting like a couple of cucumbers or a couple of peppers, or maybe you harvested an onion or two, and you end up with some odds and ends that you need to do something with. Or maybe you have a small garden and you're getting more than you can eat fresh and you need to preserve it, but you don't have enough to make like large batches and process and can. And that's where quick pickles come in. You can actually pickle uh, much of what comes out of your garden. You can make uh, pickled green beans. I really like to do this with noodle beans. You know, you guys ask me often what to do with those and uh, noodle beans are really good pickled. Today I'm gonna be doing some cucumbers with some onions and garlic in them, as well as some carrots. I've got some carrots here, a few different size jars. I really like pickled carrots, and so I thought they would be a good thing to do today. And the brine is the same. Uh, you can do cherry tomatoes, you can put onions in, you can put whatever herbs you wanna put in. Obviously cucumbers are the thing that we know most commonly used for pickles, but anything can be pickled. And today, this is like, this is so simple that I almost feel silly making a video about it. So I've got my brine started. You wanna use equal parts vinegar and water. You can use apple cider vinegar, distilled white vinegar, you can use rice vinegar. You don't wanna do like malt vinegars or like balsamic, like aged vinegars. And I've read conflicting things, but just for the sake of staying on the safe side, homemade vinegar is suggested not to be used for stuff like this because the acidity can be lower than 5% and you want at least 5% acidity and store-bought vinegars are gonna have that. So I'm using distilled white vinegar today. I also really like using apple cider vinegar. I just don't have any right now. And you wanna do equal parts vinegar and water. Basically, you can do this and just mix up however much brine you need. I've got a half gallon jar I'm gonna do today and then I've got some other odds and ends jars. Um, I'm going ahead and making a gallon of brine and honestly, if I end up with a little extra, I'll probably just throw some stuff into another jar and pickle it too. The other thing that you need as far as preservation goes is half a teaspoon of salt per cup of liquid. And you go from there depending on how much it is that you're trying to preserve, but half a teaspoon of salt per cup and equal parts vinegar and water. You don't have to use special pickling salt. I usually just use sea salt. With the vinegar and the salt together, that's what you need as far as like preserving this. Quick pickles are kept in the refrigerator. Uh, these are not processed. I'm putting this together and then I'm gonna let it cool off enough to stick in the fridge. And it'll keep in the fridge they say uh, a couple of weeks, they last longer than that. Just use common sense and don't eat something that smells off or uh, tastes off or looks off. Uh, but in vinegar and water and in the refrigerator, you're gonna be okay as far as things lasting for a while. Uh, you do want to use a very clean jar. It doesn't necessarily have to be sterilized. I do just wash mine in the dishwasher and get them out of the dishwasher for this. Uh, but because it is also vinegar, salt, and in the fridge, it doesn't have to be uh, sterilized as if you were gonna do a water bath canning. But, you know, to be on the safe side, it is, it is good to sterilize your jars and make sure that they're good and clean. So you're gonna put the base of your brine, the vinegar, the water, and the salt in a pot and bring it to a boil. Um, I also, in this brine, I added a couple of tablespoons of sugar just to give it a little bit of sweetness. Now, you can go ahead and throw some herbs in and boil that as well. What I usually do is just pack them in the jar. And so I've got some dill here that I'm gonna be putting in the cucumbers. I've got some onions I'm gonna throw in here. And I've got a handful of garlic cloves. You can put other herbs in this, just whatever you have is fine. I sometimes like to throw peppers in these and make them a little spicy, but I have a jar of spicier pickles already in the fridge, so I'm gonna make these not spicy for my kids that don't like spicy stuff. With the carrots today, I'm just using that basic brine with a little sugar in it to make them, but uh, ginger is really good with carrots, turmeric is really good with carrots. Those are two. Uh, coriander is one that you can also often use with carrots. 
You can buy like mixes of pickling spices, but I usually just put them together myself. Uh, black peppercorns are good. And often use red chili flakes if you're not using fresh peppers. You wanna pack your cucumbers in pretty well. There's my jar before. I've got the garlic and the dill all down in the bottom, the onions down in the bottom. I'm gonna add a little bit more onions in the top because I have a little more space. I really just like pickled onions. I like to take jars, especially red onions, and just fill them up with red onions and some garlic, uh, some spices, some pepper and stuff like that, and do like a sweet brine and pickle the onions. And that's really tasty and good on a lot of different things. All right, my brine is now boiling and I'm gonna turn it off. I'm gonna let it cool down a little bit. Um, you can put your boiling brine on your veggies. The only thing is, is that it may make them a little softer because it's gonna cook them a little bit. Um, I personally like to let it cool off. It doesn't have to be completely cooled. I let it cool off to the temperature that I'm okay putting it in the fridge and I don't like putting like really hot stuff in the fridge because it heats the fridge up. It's later on in the evening. I came back after the brine cooled off and ladled it into these jars. Uh, whenever you're canning, you really wanna try to get like air bubbles out and make sure you have your head space right and all of that. With fridge pickles, it's really not quite as important. You just wanna cover your stuff and make sure that it's all submerged so that it tastes good. Um, so I've got all of these covered in the same brine. Uh, these are gonna go into the fridge tonight and they you can eat them as soon as the next day. They really are better if you wait like three days as whenever the flavors really start to meld. You'll see different suggestions. Some people say they're good for a week in the fridge. That's, I mean, they're good for way longer than that. Uh, some people will say three weeks and then in parentheses say, but they could last a lot longer. I think for anybody, you know, like I don't wanna tell you they're good for three months and then three months from now you eat something that makes you sick and then, you know, like rue my names. You know, you, like I said, use common sense. I have not really had fridge pickles go bad. I mean, we eat them fast enough. So this is definitely a tool to have in your tool belt when it comes to fruit, food preservation. If you're growing food, if you're buying food at a farmer's market, um, if you're buying food at the grocery store, it's definitely okay to pick things up and experiment with this. Turn your waiting room into a classroom. I actually learned to make fridge pickles long before I ever had my own garden. And um, whenever I got my garden, I was really glad I had the skill. Thank you again for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.